Suddenly, you catch sight of two warriors creeping towards you from a passage to your right. They are clad in jet black armor and scarlet robes, and their hideous death masks identify them as Drakkar warriors. Alright, part two. Let's do this. Suddenly, you catch sight of two warriors creeping towards you from a passage to your right. They are clad in jet black armor and scarlet robes, and their hideous death masks identify them as Drakkar warriors. They are men, but they are evil men as evil as the dark lords whom they serve. On one of them, one of them holds a razor-fanged Akaz, a creeping, leathery war dog straining on a chain leash. The Drakkar hisses and the Akaz springs toward your throat. If you wish to fight this creature, yes I do, because I have not fought jack or crap this whole book. Uh, hang on a second, folks. Suddenly you catch sight of two warriors creeping towards you from- I already read this, didn't I? Yes! Uh, I'm going to fight the creature. Oh yes, I stopped recording <laughs> like some time ago to try and get my action chart up. Um, and I had to download something to get it working again. But I got it up and we're good. We are so good. Uh, and I got all this fixed. So let's, let's do this. Let's do this fight, shall we? The Akaz leaps through the air at your face. You fall backwards, kicking with both feet, but you are winded as the war dog jolts the air from your lungs. It slashes your shoulder. Lose one endurance point. Ah, oh, son of a biscuit. <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Uh, before cart reeling over the edge of the stairs, its howl cuts short as it smashes into the marble floor of the lower palace. You spring to your feet and draw your weapon for the dark hammer rushing towards you. Wow, that's right. I didn't even have to fight him. I just killed him because I own, uh, kind of. <laughs> A terrible roar of hate and rage fills the hall. Kill him! The dark hem unsheathe their black swords, eager to obey their master's command. They attack you simultaneously. Uh, so they have a combat skill of 18, they're into 35. I can evade combat. Evade combat? No, sir. This is like the second time I've had to, <laughs> to fight. I've had a chance to fight in the whole book. So let's do this! Let's get it on! Let's see. Um, so they have a combat skill of 18. I got a combat skill of 24 again, because our arm works. Yay! And, uh, endurance points of 35. Let's do this. Let's get it on. All right. I'm 29 endurance points. They're at 35. Here we go. They're down to 19. I have lost nothing. I, I guess, pretty much just killed one of them. <laughs> well, one of them's dead. And they're down to three, and they haven't even touched me yet. Good lord. I don't know, hack on. Just a word of advice. Perhaps you should get some better help, because these guys are getting pwned. And they're dead. They did not even touch me. They, they, they kind of, like, almost got my hair, but no. I'm, yeah. Woohoo! Hooray for our side! You glimpse the silhouette of the Dark Lord Hakan in the hall below, his spiked fist raised. L like, what? Is he cheering his men on? That'd be sweet, but he should probably find better men. <laughs> uh, there's a deafening crack and a bolt of blue lightning streaks from the stone in the Dark Lord's hand. Oh, that's what he's doing. <laughs> and hurdles towards you. You dive for cover behind the body of the Darkar as the bolt explodes. In a flash of light, the Darkar is gone. Only cinders and the rotten odor of scorched flesh remain. You scramble to your feet and sprint along the passage. Another bolt hurls from the hall tearing into the ceiling with a shattering effect. Splinters of razor-sharp marble whistle down, slashing your cloak and tunic. You race down some stairs through a silver archway and along the balcony that overlooks the lower palace. A uh, peal of bells and church, uh, a crunch of iron-shod boots echo in your ears as the Zakan is, has sounded the alarm. His guards close at every side. At the end of the balcony is another arch and a staircase. Both of them look deserted. Uh, if you wish to escape through the arch, or if you wish to go up the stairs, I don't. Um, you know what? Let's let's. I I don't know. Arch or stairs? Arch or stairs? Um, how about random number table time? Zero through four is the arch. Five through nine is the stairs. So and we're going through the arch. Let's see. You run through the arch and straight into the black robe into a black robed palace guard. You bruise your ribs, and the impact throws you off balance. Uh, but you manage to grab the wall and stop yourself from falling over. The guard lies sprawled on the floor, but with incredible swiftness he draws a shining steel axe and lashes out at your legs. 
Pick a number on the random number table. If you have the Kai Discipline of Hunting, add two to the number you've picked. I do. I do have the Kai Discipline of Hunting. So, random number table eight. You see, that's what I'm talking about. Every time I get to add a number because of a bonus, I never need it. And every time I don't, I get screwed. I, you know what, whatever. So, I got an eight. I needed a five. <laughs> You whirl your feet away from the shining steel and narrowly escape being wounded as the axe bites inches deep into the polished stone floor. However, before the guard can strike another blow, you lash out and send the axe spinning from his hands. He screams, clutching broken fingers to his chest. You turn and run towards the open door. The air is filled with the sound of pounding feet, for the palace guard is on full alert. Together with the Drakharim... Drakharim, sorry. I gotta try that a couple times so I don't keep mispronouncing it. The Drakharim, they are now bent on finding and killing you as quickly as possible. Beyond the door, a bridge rises at a slanted angle over the enclosed garden, joining this part of the palace to a needle-like tower of white marble. At the entrance of the bridge, a narrow stair disappears into the garden below. Now, I know I have the discipline of healing, but I'm not using it right now simply because Technically, the way I look at this, I'm in combat right now. I don't have time to concentrate on my healing powers, so I'm not going to be renewing my endurance. Um, like, let's say this, any number section where I have any sort of combat at all, like right now, I won't be healing myself, all right? So, yeah. Um, if you wish to cross the bridge and enter the tower, you wish to descend the stairs. Let's enter the tower. Why? I don't know. I think I remember that being a, a good course of action. Yes? Alright. Inside the cool marble tower, two flights of spiral stairs meet at a landing. You just detect the sound of distant running feet gradually growing louder. It is coming from one of the spiral staircases, but which one? Suddenly a band of Drakarim uh, warriors appear. They are crossing the bridge that leads to the tower. You must escape. If you have the Kai Discipline of Sixth Sense, I do, I do have the Kai Discipline of Sixth Sense. Okay, like for example, now I'll restore a health point because I didn't really fight anything that numbered section. Okay, you guys got it? Okay, good. Long as everyone's with me, which I won't really know if everyone's with me till after I've uploaded this, so it's kind of pointless. But anyway, your Kai skills warn you that the two palace guards are running up the spiral stairs from their guard room at the base of the tower. Quickly, you ascend the stairs before the Drakarum enter and see which direction you've gone. The stairs are high and steep. You gasp for breath and force your aching legs to climb, for the Drakarum are less than a dozen steps behind you. At the top of the tower, an open arch leads out to a pla onto a platform where a huge kettle drum stands. This is used by the tower guard to send messages to the other palace towers. A bleached hide is stretched across the surface of the black wooden beater hangs from its side. If you wish to push the drum down the stairs, well, of course I do. Who can resist that? Alright, let's try this. Hopefully it won't blow up in my face. <laughs> we happen to fill this kettle drum with explosives and no one told you. Alright, um, the heavy copper drum rolls from the wooden base and crashes down the tower stair. A thunderous boom echoing from the dark as it care uh, careers as uh what as it careers on a collision course with the enemy the screams of horror are cut short as the drum hurtles through the ranks of the drakarm crushing them into the hard stone steps your quick action has scattered your pursuers pursuers but victory turns sour when you discover that you are trapped there are no other stairs from this platform you have delayed the drakarm but your reprieve is only temporary oh are there no more drums i can roll down the stairs <laughs> Alright, if you possess a rope, you can attempt to climb down to the gardens below. Uh, sure, I do. I do possess a rope, actually. Let's do that. Tying one end of the rope to the parapet rail, you drop to the other end over the side uh, and glissade down the tower. You have reached halfway when you see two drakarum above you, sawing the knot. Oh, sawing at the knot. You know what? I... That's... This suddenly seems like a very bad idea. <laughs> oh well. Suddenly the rope snaps and you plummet into the void. Uh, oh, oh well. Pick a number on the random number table if it's 0 through 2 or 3 through 9. You know, I'm thinking the 0 through 2 is death. And I get 2. Of course I do. <laughs> uh, 
for a moment you sense a bearing is completely lost as you tumble and spin into the void, unaware of what's happening to your body. You try to cry out, but your cries are lost on the winds as, the, as it rushes past. You hit the upper branches of a toa tree. You are stunned by the crash and your body becomes numb. By the time your broken body is found by the Drakarum, you have bled to death. Your life in hopes of Summerland end here. Yay! You see what I mean? This random number table hates me. It hates me. If there is a way to die on the random number table, I will do it every single time. So let's go back and pretend we chose to be through nine, yes? Okay. Uh... In a complete daze, you stumble and spin, totally unaware of whether you are falling head or feet first. The warm wind te tears at your face, forcing your eyelids and mouth open. You can barely breathe. You scream in terror until you hit the upper branches of a toa tree. In the next instant, you hit water. You rapidly surface again and instinctively begin to pump your legs. You have no idea in which direction you are swimming, but in three strokes you find yourself at the side of this deep, sculptured pool of clean water. Still shaking from the shock of the impact, you crawl your way out onto a mossy bank. Miraculously, you have escaped injury, but your ordeal is far from over. The Drakarum and the palace guard watch you watched you fall, and at this very moment are racing down from the tower and the bridge to the palace guards. Ahead of you, beyond a tree-lined colonnade, a flight of steps ascends to a small portal, portal in the wall of the upper palace. To your right, a leafy tunnel winds away into the trees and shrubs. Alright, if you have the Kai Discipline of Tracking, I do! I have that! Yay! Your Kai sense of tracking reveals that the winding path leads into the Zakan's uh, Arboretum, his Cathedral of Trees. The stairs to the portal lead to a private chamber in the Upper Palace, but you still cannot tell what that chamber contains. Well, I don't want to go back to the Arboretum. That's where I came from. There's a Dark Lord in there with lightning and stuff. I don't like that. Let's go up the stairs to the portal. Yes? Okay. Beyond the portal lies a vaulted corridor leading to a grand stairway. You narrowly avoid confrontation with a, dungeon, a dozen Drakarum saved by your lightning reactions. As the enemy rush from an archway on the second floor landing, you dive behind a statue of the recently deceased Dakan Madala. They are so intent on their chase that they fail to notice your hiding place and hurry down the stairs, grunting in their heavy armor as they run. Silently, you give thanks to the Zakan Modohala, that uh, was a very stout man, and that his statue cast a very large shadow in which to hide. <laughs> At the top of the stairway, you discover a hatch which gives access to the roof. You climb through it and follow a path of sun-bleached tiles that wind in and out of the domes and turrets, eventually leading to a bell tower. You are exhausted and need to rest, your mind still full of shock as you encounter the Dark Lord Hakan, the sound of the, his terrible voice repeating the words, Book of the Magna Kai, echoes, in your, uh, echoes again and again in your mind. With a desperation sapping your will, uh, uh, you peer out through the grill uh, in the bell tower. Blah, 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 blah. The sight before you renews your flagging hope and in, for it inspires a daring escape plan. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and restore four endurance points, mainly because um, I've actually passed six numbered sections, but um, honestly, half that time I was either falling or running, and, and you know, I just don't see that. In other words, I'm not going to give myself the full six endurance points, only four, because while I do have the healing ability, I don't think I have a lot of time to concentrate on it right now, and I'm, I'm trying to be fair with it. Alright. I do somehow think that that healing ability can be overpowered at times. In any case, uh, you know what? No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to use it at all because it doesn't seem to make sense that I'm just healing even though I I'm running for my life and falling from towers and swimming and, and exhausted. And I think you kind of have to concentrate to let it work. Maybe it works automatically. I don't know, but I'm making a judgment call where... Uh, I'm not going to count those. Maybe later I'll start counting it, because it just seems like it wouldn't work that well. Below the bell tower, you see a line of Itakar pins, each with its own circular landing platform. Itakar are a breed of huge black birds that nest in irises. 
uh, high in the peaks of the Dahir and Valkar mountains. The Vasagonians have long since tamed these giants of the skies, using them as winged mounts for their army leaders, their scouts, couriers, and envoys. An Itakar is a r and rider swoop down out of the reddening sky and alight upon the platform near the bell tower. Slaves hurl a rope to the rider, who in turn fixes it to the saddle ring before he jumps to the ground. The Itakar claws and beats its huge wings as it slowly, uh, as it is slowly winched into a pin by a hidden capstan. The rider and the slaves leave the platform. There is now only one sentry on guard at the pen. If you can overpower him, you can make an escape on the black back of the giant bird. Alright, um... If you possess a blowpipe and sleep dart... I do not have a blowpipe and sleep dart. Where did you get that? I, I must have missed that somewhere. Huh. Oh well. You leave the bell tower and make your way down the sta uh, towards the sentry. At first, dodging from one turret to the next, it is easy to remain unseen. However, for the final 30 yards to the landing platform, you will have no cover, for the platform and the palace roof are linked by an exposed gangplank. If you are to overpower the sentry, you must cross the gangplank undetected. If you have the Kai discipline of mind over matter, I do! Yay! It's so nice to have almost all the disciplines and... Like I said, love it while you can, because next book <laughs> won't be like this. Uh, focusing your skill on the money pouch that hangs from the sentry's belt, you concentrate on untying the leather thong that secures it. Seconds later, the pouch drops to the ground and, splits its, and spills its contents. The guard yelps in horror as he sees his gold rolling over the edge of the platform and drops to his hands, uh, it drops to his knees to gather what little remains. As he turns his back, you break cover and run across the gangplank. Your speed and stealth carry you across the gangplank undetected. When you strike, the guard is still on his knees, picking up scattered gold. Your attack is silent and deadly. If you wish to search the guard's body, sure. I'm always up for searching corpses. Not that that's creepy at all. You discover little of interest. Eight gold crowns and a brass whistle on a chain around the guard's neck. You may take these if you wish. I do. I do wish to take them. Um, oh, you know what? I also got to mark off my rope because I don't have a rope anymore, I would think. You know, falling through the air with the greatest of ease and all. Uh, so I got eight crowns, so I'm back up to 42. And the brass whistle. I'm not sure what that does. You know what? Uh, I'm not going to mark it on the action chart. I think it's limited use coming quickly. So, you know. No point in marking it. We all know we have it. Alright. The great black bird b beats its massive wings, cawing hoarsely through the domed uh, pen. Two black eyes, fierce and cold, fix you with a deadly stare as you edge nearer to its perch. Grabbing the saddle pommel, you haul yourself up, but suddenly there is a flash of ra razor-sharp talons. Instinctively, you shield your face as a glint of orange sunlight is caught on the Ikatar's curved beak, for it slashes the air barely inches above your head. If you have the Kai Discipline of Animal Kinship, the Onyx Medallion... I have Animal Kinship. That's good enough. We'll use that one. It can... Uh, it can take many years for a rider to tame an Ikatar, for by the nature they are wild and malicious creatures. You use your Kai skill to communicate with the giant bird, to assure it that you mean no harm. It fixes you with a cold black stare, but you sense that it is no longer hostile. As you settle into its wide saddle, you catch sight of the Drakarm as they stream across the gangplank. Quickly, you lean forward, unhook the anchor rope from the saddle ring, and grab the thick leather reins. You are jerked backwards in the saddle as the Ikatar, uh, Itakar leaves its perch. It shrieks and caws, its wings beating as loud as thunder. A handful of Drakurum are scattered as they were ragdolls as the great black bird emerges from the pen and takes to the sky. You catch a glimpse of the Drakar, his death mass, uh, of a Drakar, his death mass slashed in two by the bird's razor-sharp talons as he pitches from the landing platform and tumbles to his death in the palace gardens below. And we got a picture of the Drakar falling to his death. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, it's alright, I would have just killed you anyway. 
probably better this way. The golden domes of the Grand Palace grow smaller as the Itakar gathers speed. Soon you have passed over the city wall and are heading out towards the shimmering salt flats of Lake Inharim. The land below is bathed in beautiful orange twilight as the sun slowly sinks behind the Dahir Mountains to the west. Elated by your escape, you throw back your head and give a voice, uh, uh, give voice to a triumphant yell that is carried away on the chill evening wind. As if in answer to your cry, an echoing chorus of shrieks pierce the sky. Fear returns to your heart as you catch sight of a flock of Kran, hideous leathery winged flyers. Each carries a Drakkar warrior on its back. They are over a mile behind you, but they are quickly closing the gap. Less than an hour of light remains. If you can evade them a little longer, you may be able to lose them when night falls. You must decide which direction to fly, for you are now above uh, the center of Lake Inaherm. Consult the map before making your decision. If you wish to steer the Ikatar south towards the Darhir Pass, or if you wish to head east towards the town of Kula. Uh, I'm going to go towards the town of Chula, Chula, because I want to go to the coast, not south. Uh, south is further away from my homeland. I don't want to go there, so I'm going to go towards the east. And I, and I, by the way, I've been starting to keep track of my endurance again ever since I got on the bird, because it makes sense now. I'm not in fighting anymore yet. So right now we're at three. I might as well mark that, because I'll forget. You know me. <clears throat> you can clearly see uh, da -da 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 -da. you can clearly see the main highway that links Chula to the capital. It crosses the desolate, desolate salt plain of Lake Inharam by means of a causeway 30 feet high, and it is a useful la Little stone houses with beaten earth roofs are grouped in small clusters along the highway. Their number is increasing as you draw near to the town. You are five miles from Chula when you notice a dark cloud hovering several hundred feet above one of the small villages. It is a cloud of Kran. They are moving to intercept you. Suddenly the, Ica the Itakar squeals in pain and a splash of feathers billowing out from its wing. Huh? A Kran is closed in from behind. It is less than a hundred yards distant. The Drakkar rider holsters an empty bronze crossbow and draws his black sword. His bolt has passed through the wing of your mount, and he prepares to strike the Ikatar uh, as the Ikatar loses height and speed. Ah, oh, that's not good. Drakkar Kran Rider! Combat skill of 20, endurance of 28. Let's see, uh... The Kran and its rider are swooping on you from behind. You are, will only be able to fight for one round of combat before they are carried past in the momentum of their attack. All right, so one round of combat. Let's see. So we're doing battle. He's got a combat skill of 20. I've got a combat skill of 24. He's got an endurance of 28. Not that that really matters. We're just doing one round. All right. So let's do it. Let's battle. Let's, let's do it to it, huh? Um, and I lose like one point, and he loses a lot more than I do. So... He loses more. Let's see. Uh, the enemy loses more endurance points than I do. Let's go back to my character sheet so we don't actually save that. I lost one endurance point. So, there we go. Uh, right here. So I won that little pass. Your blow has opened a wide gash in both the Drakkar and his mount. The Kran spins uncontrollably, discarding its black-clad rider as it spirals through the earth. I love that. Discarding like it's a, like it's an unneeded robe. <laughs> Goodbye. While the terrible cries of the doomed Drakkar are fading below, you, with the terrible cries of the doomed Drakkar fading below, you wheel to the south to avoid being caught between the two converging squadrons of Kran riders. Great, so I should have gone south. I never choose right. <laughs> the quick change of direction increases the distance between you and your pursuers, but the it Itakar is badly wounded, and you are close to despair. Your mount is losing so much blood that it could lapse into unconsciousness at any moment, dropping you like a stone onto Lake Inharam. Suddenly you spot something in the distance. It is a sight that renews your faith in miracles. It's Fabio. No, <laughs> no, it's not, because that would not help me that much. 
Emerging from a bank of cloud on the skyline is a flying ship. It is a small craft no bigger than the Unaram River Barge, with two triangular sails swept back uh, either side of its curving prow. In the fading twilight, you can make out a long pennant that flutters from its mess bast. A faint humming reaches your ears. Your first reaction is disbelief. What you are seeing must be a trick of the light, or some fiendish illusion created by the Dark Lords. However, as the ship floats nearer, your senses tell you that it is indeed quite real. If you possess the Crystal Star Pendant... Um... Okay, um... The Crystal Star Pendant, if you guys remember, was given to us by Bainden, the guy from the very first book who we helped, uh during the Dark Lord invasion, that mage. And remember I told you he would become important later on in the series? Yeah, I did tell you that? Yes, okay. Standing at the fortified platform in the center of the strange craft is a blonde-haired young man with deep brooding eyes. Instantly you recognize him. It is Bainden, the young summoning magician who gave you the crystal star pendant at the ruins of Raumas after you saved his life in a Gak ambush. You are so stunned by his unexpected appearance that you fail to notice the blood seeping from the Ikatar's mo Itikar's mouth. The creature is near death. Suddenly, the great bird lets out a pitiful and agonized caw. Its ring wings stiffen and its head falls limp as the last flicker of life escapes from its torn body. It pitches you forward and your stomach heaves as you plummet towards Lake Inurim. Oh gosh, pick a number from the random number table because this always works so well. Ah, two. Two! Come on. There we go. As you tumble earthwards, 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 a blur of color flashes before your eyes as the Kron Riders, the sky ship, and the distant horizon all melt into a kaleidoscope of shapes and images which you fear will be the last thing you will...